There's a lot of things that make Akira Kurosawa films unique. He has his own way of filming movement. You got his dynamic action sequences that are shot from multiple camera angles, the striking compositions, staging, and probably above all of these, just his preference for on location shooting. And this is when he just films landscapes and just the nature and he films them in a way where they almost become characters in their own way. And this is especially what I love the most about Kurosawa films. There's just lots and lots of weather and nature, and you remember it. I often get tired of just films taking place in, you know, ugly cities or, you know, warehouses. But Kurosawa films, they're just full of color. You get mud, dirt, rain, fog, sunsets, the effects of heat, cold, snow. But it's not just there to look good, even though it does look good. It's used to define the mood, to heighten the action, or to reflect the emotional and psychological states of the characters. And even his assistant producer named her account with him as Waiting on the Weather. And I can only imagine just the patience him and the entire crew must have had in order to just be able to wait hours or even days for that perfect red sunset that you get in Kagamusha. Curse all films are indeed just unique. So here's some examples I'm going to give you from the films. So probably Kurosawa's most celebrated film has to be Seven Samurai. The sets are often covered in rain and it's often noted for its dynamic action sequences with just the ever active camera putting the viewer right in the dirt and mud and confusion of battle. In the actual introduction of the film you just get these dark clouds looming overhead. And it just focuses on these bandits ransacking the countryside. Rain itself doesn't actually appear that much in Seven Samurai, but for some reason you remember it. And I think it's because when it does rain, it really downpours. It's almost as if it's just extinguishing the fires of the evening's battle. Or just even giving a foreshadow of the epic battle that's about to happen. The rain itself just gives such tension to the final battle. It's almost to represent just the bloodshed that's about to happen. And it just does such a great job at just emphasizing the brutality and chaotic nature of this fight. Instead of just using music, Kurosawa was able to use rain. It's pretty impressive. Rain actually appears in a lot of his films, but for some reason I remember it the most in Seven Samurai and actually Rashomon. In Rashomon it's used as mostly symbolism. The downpour in Rashomon is just relentless and the entire scene is dark. We constantly listen to just different accounts of people twisting the truth for their own gain. The world itself is hidden in darkness by these clouds with destructive rain just pouring down. This is especially evident when the rain suddenly stops at the end and then you just see these dark clouds move away to reveal the sun. It happens during a scene when it's supposed to make you feel like there's just this hope in this world and it really just heightens that feeling. <laughs> Out of all of his films, Heat itself is definitely depicted the best in his 1949 film, Stray Dog. In fact, this may be the sweatiest movie of all time. Just watching the sweat just pour off of Toshiro Mifune and Takashi Shimura will probably make you sweat. Kurosawa conveys this high pressure atmosphere throughout this film. And he does so by continuously showing the characters just wafting themselves with fans or 
even just mopping up their faces that are covered in sweat. Stray Dog is more than just a buddy cop drama. It's really dark and gritty. It takes place in just this rubble and rock setting. And it's during occupation era Tokyo during a summer heat wave. So you can only imagine that. And here Toshiro Mifune is just this young rookie police detective. And he's hunting down this killer who stole his pistol. In combination with just the use of light and shadow of film noir, Kurosawa is able to use heat and humidity to just evoke this claustrophobic, desperate feeling of chaos. Dersu Uzala is Kurosawa's Man vs. Wild film, and it's an epic adventure. And this film does a really good job at showing just the extreme weather of Siberia. And it shows multiple seasons, but I think the cold is what stands out the most. There's so many great shots of just the reflective fields of ice, just the barren landscapes. The bitter cold that just makes you want to stay inside in your warm shelter. Just the barren nature of it all and just how some people are able to live in these extreme environments really amazes you. Some scenes are pretty amazing on how they were even able to film them. In fact they look kind of dangerous. And there's one particular scene where their Sue and the captain are just racing against the clock to build this shelter before freezing to death. And it's all just filmed during this intense, has to be dangerous windstorm. There's no way they could have fabricated this. This has to be a real storm. And it just shows how Kurosawa has such a passion for his vision. And while staying on the topic of cold, no other movie depicts snow and such a memorable and touching way than Ikaru. This is only one scene, but it's easily the most famous scene in this entire film. In fact, whenever I think of this movie, I just think of this scene. So the story itself is about a character that gets an epiphany. He gets a rebirth. And this is after discovering that he's gonna die. And so he dedicates the last few months of his life in order to help a neighborhood woman replace the toxic sump with a park for children. He uses his bureaucratic job for good. He follows the correct paperwork, manipulates never-ending bureaucracy, and he battles administrative idleness, all in the name of a noble cause. This is something that was severely lacking from his entire life. It seemed like every day he would just go to work and, you know, never try to help anyone. In one of cinema's most touching and lyrical moments of all time, upon his final triumph, the main character sits on the swing in the park that he built. There's snow falling lightly around him, and he sings, Life is Brief. And we see this older man that's happy for the first time in his life. This is a scene that just gets me every time. It's the music, you know, the visuals, it's, it's perfection. And it just looks so dreamlike. I feel like if anyone else just filmed a park in the snow, they would not get the same effect. Only Kurosawa can make something so beautiful out of something so simple. Fog is this always present element in Kurosawa's dark retelling of Macbeth. Its use is to express the inner demons of Mifune's character and to hide the forces that steer his fate. The film opens up with a destroyed barren landscape and it cited the site of Cobweb Castle. The swirling fog thickens and then it fades again and it's showing how it was at the beginning of the events that are about to be shown. Another pretty brilliant scene shows Washizu and Miki just becoming lost in this dense fog. 
It demonstrates Kurosawa's mastery at using atmospheric conditions to depict screen death. Once again, it's just amazing how Kurosawa was able to shoot this entire film with just fog. Did he just wait to shoot the film only when the conditions were perfect, when it was perfectly foggy? Wind is the other element in Kurosawa's other Shakespeare adaptation, King Lear. This is his second, maybe even third if you count the Bad Sleep Well take on Shakespeare. And the wind in this film is just a force that expresses just the storm that's contained within the word Ron, which means chaos. Throughout the film, the weather progressively becomes more and more overcast and windy. And it's just a unique way of just showing how the mood is getting worse and worse throughout the story. The sequence in which Nakadai's character is just driven mad from his burning castle, it's amongst the greatest scenes ever filmed. Just the way the wind tears at his white hair and robes while black smoke emits from the castle's burning remains. It's perfection. Driven beyond the brink of insanity, Tatsuya Nakadai just roams these windswept wastelands it's just such an iconic and perfect moment. Wind manifests itself throughout the film, and we see frequent shots of rustling flags, banners. Also, just a devastating scene of Nakadai's character just returning to his old castle with his only son that came to rescue him. It's both haunting and chaotic, just like the title. So there's this endless uses of weather in Kurosawa films, but I feel like these ones stand out the most to me and are probably the most brilliant. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying the nice spring weather. Please subscribe. You could join my Discord. And don't forget to check out my Patreon if you want to help the channel grow.